Who likes board games? I'm bored, James. And when bored James is bored, I play some board games. Before everyone on Earth got swallowed up by screens on everything... Board games were a great way to get together with some friends and have a good time. Or tabletop games, or whatever the hell you want to call them. I don't really care. Look, if it involves cardboard and ice art, it's a board game to me, okay? And there's still a great way to do that. It's just not everyone's first choice to entertain themselves with friends. In fact, it's probably one of the last choices on most lists. You see, board games, especially the more complicated ones, have always been seen as a nerd hobby. Now, this isn't like when video games and the internet were once seen as a nerd hobby, and now everyone uses and plays those. Board games have always been seen as a niche thing, and that has never really changed. Uh, like, like, dude, you're a grown adult and you're playing with cardboard? What is this, fucking Nintendo Labo? But joking aside, if you enjoy it, you should be able to. It doesn't matter your age or if it's seen as a nerd hobby, there's nothing wrong with finding enjoyment in board games. So yes, board games are still to this day very niche. And there are tons of enthusiasts in that community and are dedicated to their craft. They're usually older folks like 30s to 50s. It's very rare to see a young board game enthusiast. But because of the niche status, a lot of them are friendly with each other and a lot know each other. And that's probably because board games are made to be played with others. If you have no friends, there's not going to be many board games to play. Ever try to play a game of chess by yourself? <laughs> You'll be playing a game of Hangman right afterwards. And a lot of board game enthusiasts are always looking for something new to play. The next thing to get your pals together and to have a good time with them. Hey, stop touching my ball! Now, on the corporate side of things, the board game market is usually cornered by the usual. You know, Dungeons and Dragons, Warhammer, all that jazz. If you want something new, you gotta really look out there. That's where Kickstarter comes in. Now, I'm not gonna go on some big explanation about Kickstarter and its history. There are dozens upon dozens of other videos on that. This is a video about one specific Kickstarter involving a board game. The board game Kickstarter in question is called Catalica. At least that's, that's how I think it's pronounced. I have no clue. Described as a typical space opera shoot 'em up, I have no idea what the hell that means. It's a game about the galaxy attempting to become the perfect organic being and using different factions and tactics to achieve that. It's apparently really deep and lore driven. In fact, I heard Vadi Vidya is making a video on it soon, so my overclocked chimp brain can understand it easier. It's definitely appealing to the eyes. However, there was no video on it, only pictures of the cards and boards in the prototype phase. Despite there being no video, however, what the Kickstarter showed was enough to get a few people interested. The Kickstarter only asked for $7,500, and it managed to slightly surpass that goal with just 85 backers. Like I said, small but dedicated board game community. So, 85 people managed to put thousands of dollars on the line, a hefty chunk of change for a project like this. And from the looks of things, the creator was pretty honest about most things she was claiming. She was having issues with the costs and the development and other issues, but, but no big deal. This stuff happens. But then, on June 3rd, 2012, a rather odd update came from the creator involving the game. And calling it odd is the understatement of the century. Ever since about December, I've been harassed by a voice that is claiming to be the sun, and it's been attacking me and harassing me almost every hour of the day. This is the best way I can explain what I'm going through. If anyone has any advice or can offer help with this problem, it was not really what I was hoping for and it was very much not what I was told making this game was going to be like last year when I started working on it. Voice says, the sun doesn't want you to publish Catalica because it wants to be almost exactly like Catalica, but it keep it all a secret. If you publish your game, it is going to let people in on too many secrets. So, the creator of this board game has basically put it on hold because the sun, the one in the sky, is telling her if she makes the game, bad things will happen. There were no other red flags about this project up until this point. And after reading this, that's when the backers of this game came to the full realization, oh fuck, who did I just give my money to? But remember, like I said, the board game community is small and full of older people, and they realize that the creator is clearly not mentally in the right headspace. They tell her she's just hallucinating to calm down and get some professional help. They didn't insult her or make fun of her, they told her everything is going to be alright. Of course, this didn't stop some people from screwing with her. Do not finish the game! Take the money! Buy a sniper rifle! Kill all those who displease me! I am your master! Obey me! 
So after this update was made, things would go off and on for a bit. Some updates about the status of the game were here and there, so it looks like despite the obvious mental health issues of this woman, she was still trying to get the game done. That was until one day, she made another blog post with even more red flags. The spiritual side of this has been calming down a lot in the last month or two, as we've been working through some of the more complex details behind the spiritual plasma attacks that have been trying to destroy me since 2008. Basically, the US Navy has been putting up transmitter systems all over the place to control the plasma transition so that I can try to use information as a weapon. Apparently, I record some things in my game that were a reference to Navy weapons without knowing that, and so I became one of their targets. I'm, um, I'm not seeing the game or my money back, am I? Okay, so, now it's no longer the sun, but now it's spiritual plasma attacks and the Navy SEALs that are causing issues. Okay, so think of the military and the, or the Navy SEALs or whatever are causing issues. That's like a really common conspiracy theory. I get that. But what in Christ's name is a spiritual plasma attack? That sounds like a fighting game move. Actually, you're not going to lie. It sounds really badass. If I ever make a game, I'm going to have a move in it called spiritual plasma attack. So it's become very obvious to everyone. Molly is not mentally well. Talks about Hadoukens and Navy SEALs conspiracies, it's become very obvious she has some issues going on. But the problem here is, people have given money to her, and if things escalate too much, their money is gone, and who knows what else could happen to her. So the backers are continuing to give her advice to seek medical help. I mean, that's all they could do. This continued on for a while, and she kept giving updates on the game, but also the updates became a blog about her personal life. If you back this, you got to see just how screwed up her life was and what probably led to her current mental state. She was in multiple accidents, she was moving from location to location, her shit was constantly getting stolen, and not to mention constant spirit battles. All this was transpiring while she was still trying to get a board game done. Yes, surprisingly, she had never stopped trying to make the game despite all of this happening. Any other person would have gone silent, but she didn't. So yes, despite all of this, the production of the game is still happening. But this shit went on for years. Like, seven years of her going through physical and mental problems, until in 2018, when the unthinkable happened. People actually started receiving copies of the game. Yes, the game had actually gotten completed. Sort of. I'll get to that in a minute. But you see, even though people were receiving the game after all this time, not everyone got their copy of the game. A lot of the backers didn't get theirs, and to my understanding, still haven't. That would be because shortly after some started receiving their copies of the game, Molly just vanished. Updates stopped being made, and no more games were being sent out. I mean, it's very clear she didn't take the money and run. The game was made and a couple people got their copies, but she was gone. Her Facebook and her DeviantArt page are also gone, so she's basically gone off the grid. Nobody knew what happened to her for a while, until a YouTuber named Slopes Game Room, who makes a ton of great videos on Kickstarter stuff, made a video about this exact topic where he managed to get into contact with Molly and conduct an interview. And, uh, it's something else. It's not really an interview. It's this long rant about everything she could possibly muster her personal life, the issues that came with it, and then devolves into other things like her intersexuality, her views on feminism and men, and uh, um, uh, wasn't this supposed to be about a board game? I'm surprised she even had the mental fortitude to even pull this off in the first place. I suggest you go check out Slope's video on this too. It helped with a lot of research and the whole interview is just batshit insane. But besides this B-movie script of an interview, what about the game itself? The one that actually made its way to the backers. From what I've read and seen from the very few reviews on it, the game is a mess. But an entertaining mess. The rule book is apparently completely nonsensical and confusing. God, I can only imagine what that is. And the game comes off as apparently complicated and simple at the same time. Even reading descriptions of it in detail, I can't wrap my head around the concept and goal of the game. But it does look like if you can get your hands on it and get some friends together and understand the complicated rules, you can have some fun with this. That being said, you're not getting your hands on this, let alone getting some friends together to play it. Because there were only 85 backers who were supposed to get the game, and only about half of them actually got it, this thing has become quite the rare item, because there's only about 40 of them in existence, and the creator is clearly not in the right headspace to make more. 
So in the future, this thing is probably going to be seen as some holy grail of board games due to how rare it is, and the crazy ass story behind its creation. And you know, it really sucks, because it really does feel like Molly just wanted to make a good board game people could enjoy, but her mental state and life got in the way. She's apparently still somewhere out there posting crazy ass things regarding ghosts and voices, so it seems she still hasn't gotten the help she needs. I sure hope things make a turn for the better for her. Oh, and I guess this is my Christmas video for the year. Well, shit up. Wow, is this for me? Yes. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, God bless, and stay sane, my friends. Enjoy what you enjoy, whether that be video games, movies, or board games. But not the board games for me, they're too complicated. Fuck that shit, I'm going back to the simpler board games, like Crossfire! It's some time in the future. The ultimate challenge. Crossfire. Crossfire. You get caught up. Crossfire. Crossfire. You get caught up. Crossfire. 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 You get caught up in it. 